Today we're going to have a look at Google Earth, which is something that I imagine most people have looked at potentially for just having a look at where their houses are and what they look like from a satellite's point of view. Um, but today we're going to have a look at a couple of other bits and pieces within the software that we can use to analyse spatial patterns in the environment. So just a, a few bits and pieces if you're not familiar with Google Earth to start with. I've opened it up already, but you should be able to access it after installing it from the CD that I provided to you. Now you can zoom in and out in Google Earth in a number of ways. First of all, you can use the scroll bar on your mouse to zoom in or out. And you can also click and drag to move around and pan. You also have a, a zooming button here to allow you to zoom in and out. Or you could also type in an individual place to get to go directly there. For example, I might type in Darwin or Territory and hit enter and then we would zoom into Darwin. So the idea is to have a look at some of the data that's available and have a look around at some of the different places. One of the things that I did want to show you is a couple of different bits and pieces that you may not already be aware of. If you click on this button, for example, it shows a series of historical imagery. So Google Earth is actually made up of a large number of different data sets across the globe. And we can change it based on the date that the data has been acquired. So I can actually move this. Not oh, there, I can, if I grab this, I can move this little bar here and you'll see that the imagery underneath where I'm looking actually changes. Now this is really useful for looking at any changes in the environment, maybe deforestation or urbanization or anything like that. You can also change this to look at Mars, the moon or the sky if you're interested in looking at that. And another tool that we'll use in this in the practical is this measuring tool here. So if you click on that, that will allow you to measure the distance between different places. So I'll just end it there and we'll pop back in a moment for the second.